Greetings, this is Oregardian, and today I will be presenting a rather clean game I recently had on the 1v1 ladder, this time against Kristoff. Kristoff has been a strong player for a long time, and this uh, game might provide some insight on how I play against these types of players. Picking on straight MME, uh, which is the default template of the 1v1 ladder, ideally uh, you want to spread your picks to guarantee coverage in two um, contestable regions with uh, the majority of income. On this particular distribution, the strongest income centers are around the Scandinavian Peninsula and in the Americas. The Scandinavian Peninsula region, including like Scandinavia, Greenland, Europe, West Russia, and Caucasus eventually. And then with the Americas, you're looking at South America, Central America, West US, and East US, and Antarctica. There's two first term bonuses here, one on Scandinavian Peninsula and one on Antarctica. Um, the Scandinavian Peninsula first term bonus is very strong. It's not contestable from any other pick in the area. Um, and completing this first term bonus will allow you to just simply control and deny any attempt by your opponent um, to complete any of the other bonuses here. As for Antarctica, this is a weak first term bonus. It can be com completed with any three of the picks, South America, South Africa, and Australia, and it can be countered by any of those three picks, making this um, first term bonus particularly weak and not a good one to go after. It's essential, therefore, to um, pick the Scandinavian first term bonus and guarantee at least one of these picks. Um, this can be done with the first and second combo, or the first and third pick combo. Since I rate um, South America higher um, than West Russia on this map, because South America doesn't have any double borders, and South America has a stronger um, single border pair uh, uh, against Central America due to the ability to transfer between Colombia and Venezuela, where Panama cannot transfer to and from Cuba, um, uh, makes South America a fairly strong pick in of its own right in general by itself. After that, I picked the weaker of the pair as my fourth pick, and then a adjunct fifth pick in East US is also very good. Um, in fact, you might be able to make the argument that East US is stronger here, but that might have been a bit of a of a tactical mis or strategic mistake on my part. Two four five is picked in this combination. While technically does not guarantee the North Americas, it's very likely I'll get one of these three picks. I find it unlikely that my opponent will pick these all three of these picks. If they do, that should be losing against West Russia and Scandinavian Peninsula, and also the adjunct sixth pick East China which has expansion opportunities in the East Russia and opportunity to counter West US. So that's the general idea of what I had for picks. After picks I end up with my first pick, my second pick, and my fourth pick and I miss my third pick. It's likely that Kristoff um, also recognized the St Scandinavian first term bonus to be very strong. Um, so it comes as no surprise to me um, that I miss one of the first term bonuses uh, picks and that it's very likely Kristoff also knows that I'm in Scandinavian Peninsula. So I find it very unlikely that Kristoff will attempt to go complete West Russia with knowing that I'm already here and have the ability to, to prevent that completion. As for the other first term bonus, Antarctica, um, I can't allow this to be completed. If it's completed without me attempting a contest, um, even though I don't know my opponent is there, um, then that's just losing to me since my 
maximum income is nine and two turns and this person and the, that bo bonus which I can get that nine income with is adjacent to the first turn bonus so it doesn't look good to me to complete South America first I have to go after Central America first if my opponent is not in Antarctica but is instead in East US which is a definitive possibility given the strength of East US the game ends up being lost anyway so I go for completion of Central America, and I need to deploy everything to Argentina uh, to attack Seifel. And uh, um, while this, um, yeah, this will, yeah, um, this will guarantee that my opponent would not be able to complete the first turn of uh, bonus if they attempt to do so. So after the first turn, I confirm my opponent is in the South Pole. What's interesting, though, is I don't see any visual deployments here. And what that suggests to me is that they're going after a plus five bonus, since I also didn't see any evidence of movement in West Russia. It's possible that they could be deploying to West Russia, a little bit, but that doesn't make sense to me since I didn't see them. If I saw some income, they probably would have wanted to play a little bit more aggressively there, at least. Um, also, it wouldn't be if it still wouldn't be wise for them to be completing that anyway. So my suspicion at this point is that they're going after a plus five, whether it be East US, Greenland, or Australia. That means, also, since I got my first pick in Scandinavian Peninsula, I would say there's a 60-40% chance that I have an order priority here. So the move will be to attack South Pole from Saipol on the first turn. I think this is a reasonable prediction to make, given the evidence that's in front of me. So that's what I do. And I don't see any deploy. Um, they attempt to escape but I have um, order priority this turn, so I am able to wipe them before they move to Scott. In addition, as a final move, I see them coming to Finland with um, uh, th attack of three, and this confirms that it is very likely that Kristoff completed a plus five, since that takes all your income for two turns to complete. I don't see East US, so that means that there must have Christoph must have completed either Greenland and Australia. Greenland would be the trickier of the two possibilities. They would have the option to complete Canada, and um, uh, uh, but that is still takes a very long time to do. My win condition would be to complete South America at that point, um, and I. Complete South America and complete Antarctica. I would just simply out expand them from Greenland, and it's just a bit longer of a gameplay. Um, if they're in Australia, that's even better for me, because uh, that uh, constrains their expansion entirely. Say they were to wipe me out, if they were to win the contest of of Antarctica, then um, not a wipeout because I can guarantee I won't be wiped out. Then all their expansion opportunity is South Africa, really. Um, either way, this game looks pretty good for me at this point since I did not see them in Eastern US. So that. Their win condition will be, if they're in Greenland, to simply wipe me out from Scandinavian Peninsula, or if they're in Australia, to wipe me out from Scandinavian Peninsula and to defend their double border. Since my con win condition doesn't rely on um, uh, necessarily contesting or breaking the Australia bonus if they're there, I don't have to contest this double border. So... Um, I could just retreat um, this income from South Pole to Saipo. 
and um, I can work on my win condition of completing South America. I do have to keep in mind that my opponent has order priority on this turn, um, so I need to deploy for income to Norway. This ends up working out. Um, I can complete two territories in Colombia and guarantee I do not get wiped from Norway. So that's what I do on this turn. Um, after this turn, I confirm that my opponent is in Australia once they defend their double porter that is on Scott. Um, so at this point, uh, I know that I am winning. I'm essentially winning. Given that their only expansion opportunity would be into South Africa, all I really have to do then is complete South America and blockade Cyprus. If I blockade Cyple, there's no way that a unexpected stack or a, a stack trying to build in this direction will ever be able to break through and contest this income in the short term. Um, so all I have to do then is blockade Cyple, complete South America, and dodge in Scandinavian Peninsula. I have order priority to this turn. Um, so I'll use that, although all I need is two income here, which I, I can afford to deploy there to guarantee that I don't get eliminated from the Scandinavian Peninsula. Even if they deploy all their income to Finland. So, um, I only see seven of their ten. Um, uh, they deployed an additional three to, to Moscow. I, I dodge into Murmansk because I know that um, there's some value in attempting to complete Rust Russia, um, even though that's not an ideal. And they, are, But the more um, the nicer looking bonus at this point is to them is probably Scandinavian Peninsula due to its ease of, of completion. In the meantime, uh, I deployed uh, one disciple to get a nice blockade there. And that just essentially locks out any opportunity of contest of Antarctica and only expansion opportunity for them is South Africa at this point. Finally, uh, this is, ends up being the last turn, um, and this is kind of the last tricky turn of the match. I'm up two income, but I still have to be a little bit concerned of being wiped out in um, Scandinavian Peninsula. My opponent, as a last-ditch effort, needs to complete Scandinavian Peninsula and hope that I play passively here. It doesn't really suit me to play passively in this position. Moving to Moscow would make it more difficult to break um, Scandinavian Peninsula and also would put me behind one income. Um, to attack, attacking Norway directly isn't a good idea either. Um, uh, prioritizing that, I'm. It'll be twenty. They'll be able to, to play up to fifteen here on this particular turn since they have the card piece, the full reinforcement card, just like I do. Um, so they'll be 25 to 24. A direct attack of 24 will lead to them having uh, just enough armies to counterattack and um, wipe me from Murmansk. So um, better to um, hit, uh, deploy everything and hit Finland. Although they have order priority, Kristoff has order priority on this particular turn. Um, I'd rather um, it's it, it it makes more sense uh, th to to attack Finland simply because the turn would need to be spent with uh, force putting all their income transferred to Finland to to really really hurt me. And that means I wouldn't be eliminated either, since the army's turn was spent transferring to Finland. Um, furthermore, um, given the pressure that my opponent has to completing Scandinavian Peninsula, um, best to um, just attack Finland directly. Um, 
and if they try to do something a little bit more on the cheeky side or expect me to try a little bit more of a cheeky move such as like partial attacks too um, that sort of denies that strategy as well. Uh, Christoph ends up doing some sort of partial strategy where expecting a some attacks on some of these uh, uh, um, like a partial attack on both borders um, but um, that's denied by the simple direct attack on, on uh, Finland in addition to Kristoff also just trying to complete Scandinavian Peninsula as a last ditch effort. That it's um that that attack is um strong. I I kill twelve defending armies while losing only eight and that plus four um really just seals the deal. And after that turn my opponent surprise resigns and that's not a surprise given that there's no opportunity for Kristoff to expand into Greenland or Caucasus, because um, I can simply contest those at this point. I have room to expand into the East US very easily, and South Africa is just not good. It's just not an efficient bonus. So at this point, it's no surprise that my opponent resigns. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video um, helpful and maybe you'll be able to uh, apply something from this video to your um, gameplay in the future.